talked about how we wanted this uh, interface to be like scalable or all interfaces should be uh, or game systems should be easily scalable and what we have in this case is we have sort of made the sort of container hard coded but that's easy to change later on if you have uh, functionality that changes um, so we're going to be making code now that allows us to have this scalable easily by having a system that builds up the widgets inside of the container so this container will be filled with widgets depending on information that we have put as parameters so if we're to start off here and say we want a variable called a uh, number of rows and we'll make it an integer and we make another variable and we want that to be a number of columns <clears throat> this allows us to define how many rows and how many columns we want our, our inventory to consist of. Uh, we want to also make this instance editable and expose on spawn so that we could theoretically uh, have that be defined when the widget is constructed, which would also allow it to, if you were to rebuild the actual container here, to be like more scalable later on, um, then that will help that along. Uh, but what we want to do then is that when this widget is constructed, we want to get the number of rows. And since it's going to be, we're going to be working with um, uh, loops. So like if you go loop like so, for loop, you can see it normally like arrays, it starts on index zero and last index is a different number. And if we say that we want to have one row, we don't want to have a first index zero and the last index one because that means we're actually doing two rows. So we have to subtract this one by one to make sure that it's getting the proper amount of um, indexes here. Uh, and after that, we want to, for each row, we also want to go through all of the columns, right? So we need to have another loop for this one as well which will get the number of columns and again minus one because for the same reason and that will be the last index there so if we had something like in our example four by three here then it would create four rows and three columns actually that way around three rows and four columns um, and then just make 12 different widgets which it creates so, um, next thing we should be doing here is we create the actual widgets. And it needs to be of the W slot, inventory slot, like so. And this one, as you see, we have exposed the item info. So it, it needs to have, or it could get an, an item info sent into it to begin with here and we're going to be leaving that one empty for now I believe uh, so we're just going to be doing this we will be expanding upon it a little bit later um, making sure that we have some uh, stuff added but that's actually let's do it right now uh, it will make more sense I think let's say we have starting items no starting inventory is a good name and then we change it to s item info like so this represents we make this instance editable and expose on spawn also so um when some when this widget is created if it is a chest for example and, and a chest usually has items in it to begin with right then we will uh, send this data into this creation of this widget as well so it will be aware that uh, this info is available on this slot so since we are creating it by rows and by columns what we need to do is some math to make sure that we're getting this because this will be an array right so we want to take a um, number of columns is going to be representing uh, 
Let, let's visualize this. If we have, this is the first slot in inventory, this is the second slot in inventory, and this, this is the third slot. This means that this would be column zero, column one, column two. So we will be taking the number of columns and uh, actually we will be doing this. I hope I'm not confusing you now here, but we will have a current index on row, which we will multiply by integer and we will use our columns as the multiplicative for that. And then in addition to that, we also need to add whichever column that we're currently working on. So we add another index or another int here and we take this index over here. So the current row times the number of columns, because that's, that's how many objects are in a row, and adding the current column that we're in will give us the index to get from this array. Like so. And then we can promote this to a variable. Just so we have something. I'm not entirely sure we're actually going to be needing this. And we'll just call it um, item info. So this is the current item info that we're working with. So we're sending in that info into here, like so. That allows us to create our widget with this information immediately, which means that if we go to our widget a little bit quickly, uh, sorry, our slot, that means that when it's constructed, it will run this and it will have this item information available immediately and it will update all the stuff with it, right? Right, so, um, in addition to that, we also want to keep track of the inventory we want to have as a, um, it wants to keep track of all the slots that it has created. So we can make a array here, which we call inventory widgets of the type. Uh, inventory slot references so it will keep track of all the references that we create so we bring this one out and we add we add the result from this creation over here and the reason we do the, do this is we want to have references to these because our individual widgets themselves hold the data that they contain and display so they're sort of containers of information which means it's important to keep track of their references um, yeah and after we've done that what we want to do is we want to add this widget we just created to our uh, area down here which is the inventory container here so we'll just get our inventory container, like so, get, and then we'll type in add child to uniform grid. And we'll drag it like so. And the content is going to be the widget we just created. Like so, and the row and the column is easily available to us because those are the ones that we're currently working on because a if we were to add a let's display this so we add a inventory slot to this inventory container you see that it looks like that if we add another one then you can see that it nothing has changed here the reason is these items since they are in a uniform container have row and column as a property on them so if I were to say it should be on row one, you can see that they have now changed position. So they are 
aligned to each other like so. If I were to change column two for this one, you can see that it would apply over there. And since it's uniform, it will try to uh, give them the best space that they have depending on their alignments, basically. Um, we will want them to be aligned horizontally and vertically so that they are uh, given the best possible spacing in here. So that if they are next to each other, it's easier to display like this. If you only had two on each, this, this container right now doesn't know how many uh, widgets we're going to put in here. But if we were to do something like this, and let's see, this one is that one, that one, and this one is going to be row one and three. Whoops, 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 whoops. Row one, you see. And this one is aligned, this one is aligned, this one is not aligned, like so. Okay, it didn't, <laughs> it didn't quite align itself like I wanted to. Uh, one. Okay, that's because you can see I have chosen column zero there and this one has column two and this one has column three, which means there's a space here for an equally big one. So they try to uniformly uh, space these out depending on how many columns and rows you use basically. So that's what we're going to be taking advantage of uh, in our dynamic creation over here where we say it should be using a specific row or column and we have these as our indexes for our loops so since this is our column loop we will just drag our column index in here like so and then we need to do the same thing for the index of the rows like so, then it knows where it should be. Uh, but like I displayed for you when I was showing in the designer, it won't uh, look super great if we don't use vertical alignments and horizontal alignments. So we will just be setting vertical alignment to center and set horizontal alignment to center as well. This might look fine in, in certain situations depending on how you create these and how many you fill them with and such things, but um, just to make it uniformly look decent, I'm going to be using center for both of these, like so. And that's basically all we're going to be doing when it comes to the, the inventory. It's it. This is basically its existence. We will be adding a little bit later on when it's relevant, but when it is constructed, which happens, since we have it directly on the HUD, it happens directly when the HUD is constructed, then it will go and say, well, I should go through these variables that are exposed and I should be looping through them to uh, get a specific item from the array, if it has one, and then creating widgets for each of these and then adding them and creating references to them and putting them in my, my grid basically. So that's what it does. This, this inventory container is only creating all the widget slots that we need for our inventory. That's its whole purpose right now. And let's go to our HUD and let's see what kind of code we need here. I think we're actually good here. We don't need anything in here. So I think that's all for now. So now we have made a code of the uh, widgets in the background. They're, they're going to be have more added to them as we go along, of course. Uh, but for now, this is enough for us to continue at least with our component and its logic. So let's just save everything to make sure that everything is saved and we don't lose anything. We now need to start creating some functions to allow this uh, component to work. And we want to create these functions uh, in such a way that, that the component can be used for both a character and for a chest, for example. So it has to be agnostic in the way of like what it's dealing with. So um, let's start off with creating a bunch of methods that we're going to need them. Um, 
Let's start off with the add to existing slot first. So this is where we have our part where we say that we're supposed to add it to existing slots. So let's create a function and let's call it uh, attempt to add to existing slots. Very descriptive. And this one is supposed to take in a, um, an item info. And what we will start to call these are uh, remaining items because we keep um, we keep trying to we, we we pick up an item or somehow get it added to our inventory and we continuously want to diminish how much is in it we try to put it in stacks where we can fit them in we try to put them in empty slots where we can fit them in and continuously just re reduce the amount of um, of this item that we have until we're hopefully left with nothing left, right? So that's why we will be uh, calling it remaining items from now on. And we'll set this to a local variable, which we will call, um, I tend to prefix all my local variables with uh, the word local, so that I know that they're local variables. Um, a local variable is a variable that exists only within the scope of which it is created. So in this case, we have a function. So this variable will only exist in this function and not outside of it. And that's why it appears in this uh, separate grouping instead of the ones we up here with variables, which are the ones that are global within the class itself. Um, so the very first thing that we need to do is we need to get the um, uh, the widgets now. We need to know what are stored in the widgets to be able to find which widget we can actually try to put it into. So that's the first thing we need to figure out. Now currently we don't actually know uh, how to get that but we will be creating a variable and we'll call it um, inventory uh, ref, as an in inventory reference and we'll make this of a type of um, our widget that is for the inventory container. By having this created like so, we can from this actually get uh, what's it called? Uh, inventory inventory widgets, like so. So with each of these widgets, we'll put it through a loop so we can get all of them. We will try and find a matching widget, basically. So what we will be doing is we're going to be having uh, each element that we have here we're gonna set temporarily to a name of a local slot widget. That didn't local slot widget like so. Why is it appearing weird? something's happening over there let's try over here local slot widget that's better so each widget that, that we're looping through will just save it temporarily here so we have it later uh, from each widget uh, slot widget we know that we are saving the item info right so we get the item info from this particular slot and we want to know if this is matching our current item that we're trying to add. So we break this to be able to get to its item class because the item class is the one that determines what kind of an item it is. And we need to compare this to something else. So we'll drag off this class and we'll type two equal signs. <clears throat> then we'll get an equal class. Then we can 
hide the unconnected pins over here so it becomes a little bit smaller. Now we right click and we type in local. Actually, we can just do this. We get this one. We want to break it similarly. And we want to use its item class over here. Meaning that the item that we are the item that we set over here, the item that we're trying to add, we're comparing to the current item that we're looping through right now. And if they are the same, then we know that they are the same item and we can try and... It's an existing slot at least, so we can try and add something to it. So we'll just put a branch in here so we know what the comparison ends up being. Like so. And after that we need to try and add it to that specific slot. So that means we have to start making another function. Uh, let's create a new function then. And we'll say add item to slots. So this is the this is a function that we will use whenever we want to. We, we say that we have a specific widget with its specific content. And we say we have a specific item that we want to add to this widget which means that we need to first of all we need to have an item to add so this is, will be our item to add but we also have a widget which we're trying to add to so we'll type in our w underscore slots let's do a space there so i can find it uh, inventory slot an object reference and we'll call this the uh, widget to add to, like so. And that's good enough for now, because if we go back now, we can say here, when it's true, when they're matching, add item to slots, like so. And the item that we want to add is our local remaining item. And the widget that we want to try and add it to is the one that we're currently looping on over here, the one that we saved away. So we'll put that one over there. So we'll be delving into doing this logic in a little bit. But for now, this is uh, what we're going to be doing. Um, we need to expand this a little bit because we want to have a result from this also. We want to know from this uh, function, let's our return over here, so we have a return node. We want to know if after having done this, if we were successful, if there are quantities still left for us to play somewhere, and if there are, we want to know the specifics about those. So we want to add two outputs here, and one of them should be an s item info. And this will be our again remaining item, and the second one should be a boolean, just determining if we have amounts greater than zero at this point. And if we go back now to our function before, you can see that we have these new pins added here, which will allow us to check this. And we want to also handle... So we loop through all of them. We'll try to add them. Uh -uh. We want to reset this. So the local remaining items to add, we basically update after having done this. So we start off with whatever we have here and then we try to add it to a, an existing slot. And then we save the new information and we keep, keep looping through and trying to add it to new slots as long as we can. Uh, at one point we will end up being done and we'll come out here and we want to return from this place as well. And again, this place also wants to communicate if we have an amount greater than zero left and what that 
what the specifics about that is. So we want to have another S item in for her again. And the boolean. This one again says amount greater than zero. And the S item should be again uh, remaining items item like so and we can use our local uh, remaining items as the variable in there but for the other part now we want to create a helper function here uh, because we're going to be make this comparison be making this comparison a few times so we'll make a function that we'll call uh, remaining amount greater than zero it's not a great name but um, it will do And we want this one to return basically only a boolean. Saying that uh, amount is greater than zero. And to be able to find that out, it needs to have an input that is of the type S item info. That is the uh, remaining item. I keep missing to put in the A's in the remaining for some reason. So there we go. And we're basically gonna have a very simple check here. Uh, it's just to save us from doing the same code over and over again. Uh, we're gonna be breaking this info and we're gonna be checking is the amount greater than zero. That is all. And then we're connecting the result out here and we're hiding the pins. And this helper function is basically done. And going back to our method again here, where we were trying to return from here, we'll use our remaining amount greater than zero, connect it up like so, have the boolean transferred there, and also the remaining item and so. So this will give us the information out from whatever is calling this, what our status is, which is good. Um, I think that will do it for that function actually. We can go back to our uh, attempt to add item. Now we should be able to use attempt to add item to existing slots. Hook it up, like so. And our first step here should be done for now. And we have this branch already ready for us over here. So that is good. Um, next, we need to have a we have a condition here of successfully added. That's the easiest one. So uh, let's do that. We'll add an output with a boolean saying successfully added, like so. And it ended up over here for some reason. We can connect it over here, seeing that if we don't have more than zero left here anymore, then we have actually successfully added this item, which is good. And we can now start working towards our adding of uh, adding to empty slot. So let's create a new function for that. Add item to empty slot. And it needs to have uh, the item to add, of course, the remaining items. Uh, S item type, item info. We call this remaining item. I'm just spelling worse and worse, it seems. Remaining item, like so. So what this one needs to do is, the very first thing that it needs to do is, it needs to check to see, we, we have already established that we have tried to put this item that we're trying to add in all the existing slots already, and we have failed to do that. 
there are still some remaining. So we need to find a slot that's actually empty, right? So that is what we will do. We will again use our inventory reference and we'll get our inventory inventory widgets and we will loop through these and we'll do it with let's we can do it with a break I think like so so that's the start so from this element we get a widget and we want to get its item info and we want to check its uh, one moment sorry about that my cat wanted my attention um, so what we need to do is we have this uh, in item info now we need to break it we need to find the class and the reason we want to do that is because we want to check if it's valid as a class and then we can hide everything else and then we can make a branch to check against this value. And the reason we're checking this is uh, a non-valid class means that it's actually an empty slot. So uh, we can create a local variable, call it local empty widget and we can set it when the condition is false like so because when it's false is when it's empty and we do it like that okay ah um need to make it of the proper type of course uh, inventory slot like so change variable type like so so now we have that so that is the first step um the next step is that we need to try and add something or try and add this item to this empty widget that we have just found that is all for this episode. Hope to see you in the next one. Keep on learning. Take care.